before the beginning, before I was traversing multiple dimensions, before the space-time continuum became a human concept, free force and progress was hindered by extreme selfishness. It was discovered that kings and ruling classes were actively working against the people's best interests. In order to silence their conspirators, the king called forth sorcerers from all four corners to spell our death sentence, to call on evil spirits to destroy our perception and prevent us from learning the names of things. They almost succeeded, until one man threw down a stick that turned into a serpent. It swallowed all their curses and exposed them as fabrications from then on. I knew that anything is possible, that if I wanted to, I can walk on razor blades and burning obstacles. I chose to go to the land where unicorns roam through. They reside in places most people never go to. When I got there, I saw the definition of peaceful, until they were attacked by a militant group who wanted to kill them for their blood and wounds, to stir them in a cauldron to make a stew they can strew, that the consumption of this brew would accrue the person with all they can desire, including the ability of eternal life. But even after their mistake was realized, they continued to kill and destroy in spite while I was constrained to watch with my very own eyes. One of the members of the equine tribe cast magic over my physical side. It meant I couldn't move or help with the fight. He said I must learn to subside. He said that whether or not this is their end is not for me to decide. And if it meant that I can appreciate compassion, they were willing to make that sacrifice. Close my eyes, I see galaxies, billions of planets and alternate realities. I can travel to any one of these, one is only limited by one's own memories or are my limitations bound by this board of keys. They say, their imagination is unlimited, but I can only think in English, so I wonder if there are things I cannot distinguish. I am not always good at giving descriptions, I transcend often between real life and fiction. Blurred lines are my addiction, perhaps it has clouded my judgement. I stopped trying to be coherent ever since my future self came back from 1812. He said he was unsatisfied with my current state of mental health. He said if I remain persistent I will have nothing but misery, but I do not believe him. I wouldn't trust myself to not deceive me. He's probably got hidden reasons with no intention of helping my present situation. I told him I would ponder on his suggestion, but if he is me from the future he'd already know what I'm thinking. Unless at some point I get amnesia. Sometimes I wish I was dreaming. I used to wonder if I was still sleeping and all the time seen as a prelude to my life before I live it in which case it would not matter if I made mistakes. As long as I remember them all when I'm awake and try not to take anything for granted, this would give me an advantage. But alas, death is yet to wake me from my slumber though it has permitted my somnambulating to write journals while barely conscious, perpetually hypnagogic. I suppose something. I'm just exaggerating when I talk about what most refer to as mythical beasts. I cannot empirically prove they exist, but I'm not the one the burden of proof lies with. Substantiation is dependence on personality and personally I am not here to convert anybody I'm just speaking from what I see from corner to cerebral cortex this is what I'm thinking it doesn't have to make sense logic is overrated does space and time even exist or rather do they exist in a way in which we perceive it or are they just fabricated products of totalitarianism these are questions that have taken me to the edge of sanity my mind has become my sanctuary I try to keep it free from anything stress related this is sometimes harder than it can be stated what helps is if I stay in places that link between realms between life and death, between earth and other worlds, where my spaceship leaves circles on alien fields, it confuses the locals, yeah, I'm kind of an arsehole, I don't know what I want so I take everything, I know it's selfish, but I never claim altruism, I am not a good human, I just pretend well, I hurt others as much as I hurt myself in this world, I mostly find the truth in fiction while fighting giant creatures and fire breathing existentialist demons, bare fisted, beating my chest standing on corpses, steam emitting from their rotten carcasses but there is a castle in the distance where more of them are hiding. I got on the back of the last remaining alicorn and rolled until we reached it. It was a large building with no doors, just a secret entrance. I resorted to my mind palace to remember how to find it. Entered the chambers through an underground conduit. I was immediately confronted by the dwellers of Hades. An epic battle ensued that included mages, sorcerers, warlocks and psychs performing telekinesis. It ended with blood spillage and a distinct stench of the devil's minions. I stood over them meritorious, holding my sword in the air victorious. As their empire came down, it was glorious. I listened to the sound of the trumpets and the sound of Groaning from thousand fallen demons crawling, my work here is done. So I return to my basement to study time and relative dimensions, their physical attributes and how to manipulate them. Fueled by a desire to rewrite history, I attempted to change many things, prevent war, starvation and people dying. But these are all fixed points on a timeline, one can alter without risking other lives. There are too many possible outcomes, each creating a different dimension so in essence, one does not prevent anything. At best, one can only shift actions to another plane of existence, in the end, it would have still happened. Thus, in time travel one can only make observations, and even then, must only watch from a distance. Some may think they're superfluous, but one can garner a plethora of information by witnessing events first hand such as 
potential reasons for a queen's execution other than what was commonly distributed. Fabricated communications while locked in confinement can make a poet's mind not care about dying or a crying boy beg for his life while a grown man gouges out his eye and justifies it by claiming inappropriate behaviour as if there should ever be considerations for killing children. But history, it seems, does not favour reason. On plenty of occasions, ignorance is triumph. I ponder often if this life is worth living, if I should just give up on the human experience, I am not an conspiracy theorist. Though I'm sure at least 90% of what I'm hearing is complete rubbish. Lies mixed with truths that aid conditioning. From infant to adolescence, we're told what to think. In adulthood, we're told not to think. So how much of what we do is really of our own volition? Do we really make choices? Or do we behave the way in which we are programmed? The best way to control a nation is to tell the people they have freedom. But neglect to say it comes with certain exceptions. I do contend though, that free will exists, perhaps. Deep in the mind's crevices, somewhere that defines true consciousness is the ability to make decisions free from external influences, far from the agenda of diabolical men. It is from this place that I attempt to write poems, to create an order of the world as I know it, bring together some form of solace, or if not, then explore the depths of my madness. If I light a candle for every time I call silence, there'll be a hundred candles lit between each solstice. Love is a strange concept. I am not always sure if I feel as I just try to treat everyone equal, treat others as I would have others treat myself. But when one has become accustomed to the cultures of other realms, one finds integration into this society difficult. Learning to handle fluctuating emotions while attempting to navigate a large corporation I became disillusioned by the lack of progress and the willingness to accept utter nonsense. This isn't what I was told what would happen. Degree holders sharing work with unqualified men. Nobody cares about knowledge or experience, the best of an individual or the pursuit of learning. As long as one is willing to be subservient, I decided to no longer be a part of it, losing myself to a false constituent was something I felt I was much better than. But then the harsh realities of life started setting in. The anger inside began rising. Years of repression is now surfacing with no formal indication of where I can go with it. This amalgamated and failed scientific experiments. Many weapons were invented to wage war with, but this was at a time when there wasn't any conflict. So a scheme was devised against another country to make it look like they were plotting something. We sent over spies disguised as tourists to look for places to falsify evidence and use this as a basis to gain public confidence. The only problem was, not everyone was convinced. There were those who saw through the facade and called us out on it. I was caught between moral responsibility and my own arrogance. Trying to justify this led to cognitive dissonance, causing irreversible psychological damage. I retired to my cabin, the one I still reside in, to console my mind with all things of detriment. An overindulgence of alcoholic beverages, pornographic content, misogynistic abuse of women. This is where I came from. It's why I sometimes feel like a saint trapped in a sinner's conscience, battling wants and violence, cutting holes in my own silence. Ah! Ah! I sit on the porch where temptation walks, watching it pass by, consenting in vain talk, masquerading as kind folk, the sight of these makes my head fall. It's like a festival for fakes and trolls, none of them seem to grasp the way of the world, but perhaps they do. Perhaps the older we get, the more we become forgetful. All the things that were supposed to teach us something useful gets left behind when leaving primary school. All that remains is our competitive attitude, where we compete for items of no intrinsic value. Our view of this life is skewed and old, before it was diamonds and gold, presently it's cars and phones, even time travellers don't always know what the future would hold, but this course is riddled with ancient dirty secrets, even now there are signs of an impending apocalypse. How much longer before non-standard communication becomes standard? Previously learned skills become obsolete. Our over-reliance on fallible objects means that if a disaster happens we will not know how to handle it. Vocal cords being unused for centuries, no contact with other sentient beings, the future is no longer what it used to be. Lessons forgotten from previous generations trying to bring these back from oblivion took multiple sessions of meditation. Along with a self-awareness and acceptance, the inevitable outcome is that one must confront their affection and face all that comes with it, including any past indiscretions, and learn to understand forgiveness. I created a new beginning, one exempt from devilish cretins who caused nothing but discombobulation. I had to free myself from all they were teaching, an age of misguidance undone in an instant. They lied when they said your thoughts are irrelevant. They lied when they said your dreams have no substance. They failed to take into consideration these also generate feelings and they lied when they said that arts would be abandoned, that either you will leave or it will leave you stranded. I have been all over this planet. Not many things remain constant. Creativity is definitely one of them, although it changes according to occasion. 
contrary to some opinions, I never lost it. I broke it down, then rebuilt it and came back with a bionic style of writing. Now I've come to the conclusion that time is extraneous. What really matters is what one does with it. You are capable of greater things than even you can imagine. The only failures are the ones who aren't trying. I am the bandit. Rolled from the ashes to disseminate philosophy. I tried to avoid hypocrisy in a land of false economy. This, of course, isn't easy. But for the time being, I have every intention to go through life and never stop thinking.